Okay, today we're going to be going over economic growth or AP macroeconomics. There's two models here to look at. This is long run aggregate supply. The vertical is the label is price level and this is GDPR. That's real gross domestic product and YF is full employment. So what this one right here is telling us is that on this excess, X axis, remember we increase from left to right and this is going to be an amount. So at this point right here our economic capacity to produce GDP means we have potential GDP. If everyone is working then we would make this much. So say for example this is 20 trillion dollars. That means that if everyone has a job and all these job all the jobs in the economy that are available are all filled and our people, our resources, and our technology are as good as they possibly can be, then we would produce this much GDP. So on the production possibilities curve, this is a combination of two particular items, capital or consumer goods. So on this curve, this shows that we can make all this GDP. Over here, we can make all of this GDP. If we have full employment, resources, and technology. Because remember, fertilizer makes stuff grow. So F-E-R-T. So this is our um, people. We're fully employed. This is our resources. That means our quality and quantity of resources is as good as it can be. These are our employees. Employment. Sorry about my handwriting. I'm trying to write vertically. I'm not very good at it. So technology. All right. So full employment resource technology. If we're to add more people, if our resources gain quality or quantity, or our technology improves, and our technology doesn't mean, you know, computers. It can be healthcare, education, anything that makes your workers better and more productive. All these things can lead to growth. So growth. Let me write that again. Growth. So economic growth means that if we're making 20 trillion in GDP, the only way to make more than 20 trillion in GDP is to add more people, improve our resources, or make ourselves more productive somehow with job training, better tools, stuff like that. So that economic growth, if we were to add some new resources, people, or improve our productivity via training, healthcare, things like that, then we would actually shift long run aggregate supply to the right long run aggregate supply. So our long run aggregate supply would actually shift and then now we'll be at a point where we could possibly make 21 trillion dollars in GDP. So this is all our new potential GDP. And if everyone's working, the resources, quality and quantity are good, and technology is good, then those are all things that could allow us to grow. So FERT, F-E-R-T, just like fertilizer, lets things grow, or helps things grow. So the production possibilities curve would actually shift outward as well. That could show all this is the new GDP we could make. So this is making more, so imagine that was our 20 trillion. And now we're making 21 trillion in GDP. So it's all about our potential GDP and how it can grow. So let's look at K for capital. So capital means that we have our real capital, we have our financial capital, and we have our human capital. So all this together is our capital stock. So our capital stock is our real capital, which is our tools, our machines, things like that. Financial capital is the money used to buy real capital. Human capital is our skills, our intellect, our abilities. So if our technology trains us to be better humans, as in workers, we could have growth. If we have lower nominal interest rates which leads to investment and investment is what you've used to purchase capital so if interest rates are low then that would be kind of an expansionary monetary policy so low nominal interest rates would raise 
our investment. So our investment is going to be, you know, buying new trucks, new tools. Um, and if we want to have what's called a positive net investment. So if we get a positive net investment, that means that we fix or replace our tools and machines more than or faster than they depreciate or stop working. So if we have a positive net investment, that means that our financial capital replaces, renews, or adds more real capital, and that can lead to growth. So all these different kinds of capital are our capital stock. And sometimes you'll see that written as per person or per capita capital, capita per worker, all those things. If any of them improve, that would lead a shift outward or a shift rightward of long run aggregate supply or the production possibilities curve. Both of these show growth. Remember our business cycle, those short run ups and downs can lead to long run of 3% GDP growth. So this long uphill battle is where we want to get as far as growing our economy by 3% capacity each year. So we have our peak where we have our inflation, we have our unemployment. Those are already temporary. Those are all temporary or short run cycles in our economy. So those ups and downs with the automatic stabilizers and things like that those are all going to be how we cruise along this path of 3% growth in the economy. So I hope that helps a lot in solving and reviewing economic growth.